Okay, this is the notes for section 6.4, Types of Quadrilaterals. If you haven't done so already, um, take a few minutes to read the section first before going on. Also, as I go through this stuff today, um, make sure that you get everything down that I have on the notes. You want to make sure you have it down exactly the way I have it as well so that uh, you have all the information as we kind of move forward from this section. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to look at those all the different special types of quadrilaterals. Now, remember, all a quadrilateral is is a four-sided figure, but there are there are there are different ones that we're we're calling special quadrilaterals because they have special qualities um, that make them unique. So that's what we'd want to do today as we look at uh, the different special quadrilaterals. <laughs> Okay, first of all, we'd like to take a look at the parallelogram family, and there are, there are four, um, four different quadrilaterals in this family. We have parallelograms, we have rhombuses, rectangles, and squares, but they all fall under the, the category of, of the parallelogram family. Now, the first, the first one we're going to look at is a parallelogram, and the definition of a parallelogram is a quadrilateral is a parallelogram if and only if both pairs of its opposite sides are parallel. So if you have a four-sided figure and you have both side, both pairs of sides that are opposite each other are parallel each, to each other, then we can say that it is a parallelogram. Make sure you get the statement down here about AB and DC being parallel, BC and AD being parallel. Okay, So make sure you have everything down exactly the way I have it here on the notes. Okay. Uh, the second type is a rhombus. When we talk about a rhombus, it's also in the parallelogram family, so we know that it's going to have two pairs of, of opposite sides that are parallel. But what makes rhombuses unique is it has four congruent sides. Okay, So you'll notice that EF, FG, GH, and HE, all of them are equal in length. Okay, The third uh, special quadrilateral in the parallelogram family is a rectangle. And a rectangle, we've worked with rectangles before. Uh, you've talked a lot of, about properties of, of rectangles. But in terms of how we're going to define a rectangle, okay, so the, 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 the least amount of in, information I need to know for something to be a rectangle is it needs to have four right angles. If it has four right angles, we consider it to be a rectangle. Okay, and make sure you have that statement down that I have here on our notes about I, J, K, and L all being right angles. Okay, and then finally we have a square. A square is the is actually the most specific quadrilateral that we have, and and what makes it the most specific is that we have to have four 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 angles that are all right angles, and all four sides have to be equal in length. Okay, so in order for it to be a quadrilateral, it has to have four congruent sides and four right angles. Okay. Okay. The next family of special quadrilaterals that we'd like to look at is the kite family, and there are two uh, special quadrilaterals that fall under that. Obviously, a kite, but also a rhombus. Okay. Uh, a, a kite is a quadrilateral. Uh, a, a, if and only if, it, excuse me, a quadrilateral is a kite if and only if it has two distinct pairs of consecutive sides of the same length. Okay, So if you look at both of these statements over here, um, both of these would be considered um, kites, both, uh, both of these figures. And notice how A, B, and B, C are equal to each other, and A, D, and D, C are equal to each other, but they're not all equal to each other, not necessarily at least. Okay, So that would make something a kite. Now, although we've already defined a rhombus up above with it having four equal sides, it would still be considered part of the kite family as well. So a rhombus is a member of the kite family and the parallelogram family. Now, we're, we're going to kind of be linking all of these families together at the end when we look at our hierarchy of quadrilaterals. But, but I want you to realize it's okay for us to have, for those two distinct pairs of consecutive sides to be actually um, all be the same, in which case we'd have a rhombus. So a rhombus is part of the kite family as well. Okay. 
Okay, the next family of, of uh, quadrilaterals I'd like to take a look at is trapezoids. The trapezoid family includes the trapezoid and the isosceles trapezoid. Uh, we define a trapezoid as a quadrilateral as a trapezoid if and only if it has at least one pair of parallel sides. Okay, so we've got our, our trapezoid over here, AB and DC are parallel to each other. Now when we talk about trapezoids, we'll sometimes refer to the trapezoid, the bases of a trapezoid, and the bases of a trapezoid are the sides of a trapezoid that are parallel to each other. Okay, and then we can also say two consecutive angles whose vertices are endpoints of a single base constitute base angles. Okay, so um, any two consecutive angles that are uh, that are have endpoints on a base would be considered base angles. So D and C could be considered base angles, or A and B could be considered base angles. Now, we need that in order to define the isosceles trapezoid. And we say that a, a trapezoid is an isosceles trapezoid if and only if it has a pair of base angles that are equal in measure. So first of all, it has to be a trapezoid in that it has to have a pair of parallel sides. But secondly, it has to have a pair of base angles that are equal as well. Okay? So I have the picture of our isosceles trapezoid over here. So you'll notice in the picture here that it has a pair of parallel sides and base angles A and B are equal in measure notice by the markings on them. Now it could be C and D, but it has to have a pair of base angles that we know are equal and a pair of sides that are parallel to each other for it to be an isosceles trapezoid. Okay? <laughs>so the final thing I'd like to take a look at is the hierarchy of quadrilaterals and the as, as I look at the, a quadrilateral its hierarchy is how all of these quadrilaterals are related to each other so they obviously all fall under the he heading of quadrilateral but um, anything that's that's below another uh, another quadrilateral on the hierarchy would be considered part of the one above it. As long as you can follow a line to get there, it would be considered part of that group. So for instance, rhombus was one of the ones that we talked about earlier. Well, a rhombus, you'll notice, is part of the kite family. Every rhombus is a kite. But it's also part of the parallelogram family. So every rhombus is also a parallelogram. Now, currently that's a dotted line because a little bit later on we're going to prove that that's true. But for right now, we're going to leave that as dotted. We're, we'll eventually fill that in a little bit later on in this chapter. Okay? Um, but also, if a rhombus is a parallelogram and a parallelogram is a trapezoid, we can say every rhombus is a trapezoid. So as you go up, if you'd never have to go down to get to one, you would say it's part of that group. So a square is a part of every one of the special quadrilaterals because you can get to any one of those from a square. That's why we consider the square to be the most specific of the quadrilaterals. Okay? Make sure that you get this, this, uh, this hierarchy down exactly the way I have it. Make sure you have all the markings on each of those different figures so, so you know based on uh, how we're defining them as to why it is where it is on the, on the hierarchy. Okay, the last thing I'd like you to do is um, take some time now and see if you can complete one through, uh, through eight here um, on the back of the sheet. Um, if you could do that and then uh, do the best you can. I want you to try each one of the problems and then in class we'll go over the answers and answer any questions that you might have from that so we can kind of c clarify any misconceptions that you might have. <laughs>